top five battle in the Big Ten on CBS. Number three, Michigan against number four, Ohio State. Both battle of the one seeds coming in. Wolverines number one in the Big Ten at 15 and one. Buckeyes 13 and one at home against the Wolverines. Middle of the first, Dwayne Washington Jr. pulls up, drills a three. Washington had 12 points. You know, he had this game marked on his calendar. He is from Grand Rapids, Michigan. The Wolverines, they caught fire from deep. They averaged four three-pointers made in the first half this season. But on Sunday, the Wolverines went 10 of 13 from deep. That's 77% in just the first half. Most three-pointers made in a first half this season. Now, early second, Washington Jr. backs down his defender, gets the kiss off the glass for the and one. Ohio State down one. Middle second half, Washington Jr. to E.J. Liddell. He picks up the and one. Ohio State up one, and they make the and one. Washington had a career-high 30 points. Liddell, 23 points and 10 rebounds. For the Wolverines, they pull away late. Hunter Dickinson down low, spins, throws down the jam with the defender. Just all over them. Michigan up three. Dickinson at 22 points and nine boards. 16 of those points coming in the second half. Two minutes later, OSU down three. Just is suing behind the back pass for Liddell, but Liddell, man, you got to look for it. The scoop by Livers down court gets the and one lay in. Michigan getting the win 92 87. It's the first win at a top five ranked Ohio State team in school history. And it's the first win at Ohio State since 2014. It snaps a four game losing streak at Value City Arena. And Michigan is now 13 and four against the spread this season. Kenny White, he told you to take Michigan earlier on HQ. And the over hits in this one. And talk about this. Hail to the victors for Michigan, their first win at a top five ranked Ohio State in school history. As we said here, look at that. First win at Ohio State since 2014. Previously, one in 13 since 05. And this is their best start to Big Ten place since 1976-77. We welcome in our basketball analyst Matt Norlander and college basketball writer Chip Patterson here to break this all down. Guys, that was such a fun game. I saw a lot of people on Twitter mentioning they just didn't want this one to end. It was so good. But Michigan finally getting a win at Ohio State for the first time in six years. Chip, what's one of your biggest takeaways from the second half in the game overall? I think that Ohio State really found itself in a spot where they were not having as many options. You look at the 30 points from Dwayne Washington, the 23 points from EJ Liddell, and then they get some nice contributions off the bench from Walker. But other than that, it just didn't seem like they had as many options as Michigan. Uh, Michigan, obviously, Dickinson in the second half, 16 of his 22 points is going to be one of the big stories. But you just look up and down this lineup and you saw really significant contributions, you know, whether it was Livers whether it was Brooks, whether it was Smith, Shondi Brown with 15 points coming off the bench. I mean, even Franz Wagner, uh, who is one of the most talented players on this roster, he's the only starter not to finish in double figures. And so in a game that was decided by uh, the margins, and there were some bad mistakes for Ohio State that I'm sure we're going to get to as well, I just thought that Michigan looked a little more deeper, looked a little bit more well-rounded, and some of those other contributors beyond the stars uh, really did a good job of stepping up in a way that I think Ohio State did not get. Yeah, I have uh, loved Sean Deese Brown's game since I saw him as a recruit at the Peach Jam. That must have been five years ago now. Good God, I'm getting old. But <laughs> the fact that he's been able to uh, transfer to Michigan in here in his grad year and be a huge, true X-Factor kind of player, I think needs mentioning. But Ultimately, what wound up happening here was what I talked about with Chris Holtman uh, prior to the game and that he did have concern about Hunter Dickinson. No one on Ohio State's taller than 6'8", and Dickinson was clearly the biggest difference maker in this one. That's reflected in the rebound margin, the rebound rate here. Let me check real quick. So uh, Michigan had a 34.5 offensive rebound rate. Ohio State had a 26% offensive rebound rate. Those numbers do mean something when you've got this many points and it's this close because both teams made basically 1.3 points per possession. Very good job overall there. Michigan just had a few fewer turnovers than Ohio State, and then that justice suing behind the back pass that wasn't needed Ugh. was really when Livers got it going in transition there. That's 
that was the thing that really kind of clinched it for Michigan effectively. You lose the points on the off offensive end there for Ohio State. Michigan converts, and then the game's uh, just barely out of reach. Taking a little step back here, does this change your mind on how teams look at either guys, or excuse me, either team for conference tournament or March Madness here, Matt? Not much. So keep this in perspective. So even with the loss here, Ohio State has nine quad one wins. No one else in college basketball has more than seven. Had Ohio State won, it would have been three clear in the top uh, quadrant there. So Ohio State's still in the mix for a number one seed. Yes, it's taken on a number of losses here. It'll probably take on at least one more before we get to the NCAA tournament. Doesn't mean this team necessarily can't win an NCAA tournament. It's a high quality team. I won't pick it to win the national championship just because I think hey, it's one actually, weirdly enough, it's, it's one of the smallest teams in the Big Ten. It's over come that with some amazing offense there for Michigan because of this win it does enter into that conversation of and you're going to hear I think plenty of this in the next 24 hours okay even though it's not undefeated it really just has one loss so how far behind truthfully is Michigan from both Gonzaga and Baylor do we really have a top three in the sport that's to be determined but I think that will be an upshot it'll be a takeaway from uh, the nature of Michigan winning this game and getting it on the road I love everything that I saw in terms of the body language, the bench, the confidence. We've got to remember that Michigan lost both the games to Ohio State last year, and Michigan winning in Columbus is not something that the program had really been used to. It had been uh, something that the Wolverines have had trouble getting over on the Buckeyes uh, there in Columbus. And so I think that for those reasons, I take a, a step back and I look at a Michigan team, very talented, one that I've think absolutely could win a national championship and I just think about what this win might do in terms of a spark in terms of really being a great affirmation of the special team that they've got right now so I come away uh, even more confident in Michigan's ability and absolutely Michigan's chances to be able to if they face off against a Gonzaga or a Baylor in a final four type scenario to be able to hold their own and not look like they are definitively uh, a tier below Low, those two teams that have led the sport since the beginning of the season. This would be an incredible, exciting Final Four matchup. Get you really excited for what's to come next month. But putting these two teams back under the microscope, is there anything that jumps out to you starting Michigan or Ohio State? Ohio State has three games left. Michigan has three to five. Two of them are TBD for Michigan that they really need to improve on as they head towards March. Chip? Michigan, not really. And for Ohio State, it's going to be defensively, particularly with the defensive rebounding. Uh, Matt mentioned those offensive rebounding rates, and I think it was about five, six minutes left. There was one possession where Michigan got about four offensive rebounds. And it's just, you know, you were sitting there, uh, if you were an Ohio State fan or an Ohio State player, you're exhausted by the end of it because you had gotten so many stops. And Ohio State's not a very good defensive team. They can still go on a deep run in the NCAA tournament without being being an elite defensive team because they're so good on offense, but you have got to be able to crash the boards and not allow a team like Michigan to get all of those second chance points. Second chance points were a huge part of the, the storyline in the second half. And so for Ohio State, you would like to be a little bit better defensively, but in particular uh, on the defensive glass, you cannot allow opponents to be able to get all those second chance opportunities. Yeah, Sherry, sure. if you'll just let me spin it forward here. I mean, if you made a list of the five best big men in college basketball, you could make a case and you could make an argument that four of them come from the Big Ten. And in fact, Michigan has one of them. And how about this stretch up coming here? So you've got Hunter Dickinson of Michigan. Next, Hunter Dickinson versus Luca Garza, the best big man in college basketball. Then against Indiana's Trace Jackson Davis, who was absolutely legit. And then after that, Michigan versus Illinois, Kofi Coburn. This is going to be super interesting for Dickinson and Michigan because surely Michigan can win all those. Will it? I don't know. And now it gets a couple of those on its home floor. The Illinois game is going to be highly, highly hyped. That that might wind up being another top five matchup. We'll wait and see there. But um, will Dickinson hit any type of freshman wall? 
going against all three of those other big men I mentioned, they're veterans. Dickinson's in his first season. Keep an eye on that with the Wolverines going forward. In my opinion, they can clearly afford to lose one, probably two more games, and still be easily projected as a one seed come Selection Sunday. All those matchups you just mentioned, I want all of them. I cannot get enough of it. <laughs> Plus, Illinois-Michigan, that game set for March 2nd. Matt Norlander, Chip Patterson, thank you so much for your insight and time as always. And if you want more from our guys, make sure you download and subscribe the Eye on College Basketball podcast. Matt Norlander, Gary Parrish getting you everything you need to know as the regular season. It's wrapping up here in about a week, and we get ready for conference tournaments and the March Madness. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.